Hey everyone, it's Alex here at The Code Wolf again. And in this video, we're going to check out the GitHub Web Editor. Now this is a really useful tool that a lot of developers either don't seem to know about or aren't utilizing very well. So let's see what it has to offer. So the GitHub Editor lets you instantly open any GitHub repository directly in the browser to edit code. You can then perform other Git-based tasks with those changes, like creating a new branch, committing those changes, opening a pull request, and so on. There are many really compelling reasons why you might want to use this tool, which we'll discuss more later, but first let's just dive in and walk through an example use case. So here I have a pretty standard GitHub repository open in the browser. Now let's say I don't have this repository cloned down to my local computer yet. Maybe I just need to browse through a bunch of the files here to try and find the answer to a problem I'm having in a different repository at my job. This kind of thing happens all the time if you're working at a company with hundreds of repos. Well, if we simply press shift and then the period key, we can actually open this entire repo in a web editor in a new tab. You can also just press the period key to open it in the same window, but I like leaving the main repo open here for management purposes. As you can see, the entire project opens up surprisingly quickly in this new tab. If this editing environment looks very familiar, that's because it's basically just VS Code. If you're familiar with Visual Studio Code, that editor is actually built using web-based technologies and an Electron shell, so it runs really well natively in the browser like this. So from here, we can do a lot of things we would normally do in VS Code. I can expand this directory to browse through files, and they all open with code syntax highlighting and the proper formatting that you'd expect. We also have tabs along the left to switch between different control panels, such as the source control tab that will track our changes. So while we're in this editor, let's say a request comes in for a simple hotfix on this app. We just need to change an app configuration value, something simple that we can feel confident about without cloning the entire app down to our local computer for extensive testing. Plus, your build and deploy process should be able to catch potential errors anyways. So let's open up the app settings file, and let's say we want to increase the logging level to error because too many logs are getting saved and taking up storage with this lower setting. Well, let's also say that was the only change, and so now we want to commit those updates on a new git branch and open up a pull request to send to another developer for approval. To do this, let's move over to the source control tab, and there we can see our app settings changes. Well, if we look at the bottom of our editor, we can see that we're currently still on the main branch here. It's usually not a good idea to commit directly to main. Instead, we want to create a separate branch and then use a pull request to merge our changes in. Lucky for us, the editor can help us out with that. Along the top here, we have various options for working with Git, such as committing the changes, opening a pull request, and so on. There's even more interesting options buried in the ellipsis here, but for now let's select branch, create new branch. The editor will prompt us to enter a name for the branch, so I'll call this logging changes, press enter, and then choose to switch to that new branch when prompted. The editor will quickly reload for us, and now all of our changes are still active, which we can see on the source control tab, but we can also see that we're now working off of the logging changes branch, which is what we want. This is where we want to commit our changes. So along the top, let's enter in a message of changed log level or something similar, and then go ahead and hit the commit button. Our active changes will disappear since they've been successfully committed to this new branch. The last step is to open up a new pull request. We can do this using the ellipses menu again, and this time choose pull request, create pull request. A new panel will open to manage creating this for us. You can see this gives us the option to choose a source and a target branch, as well as enter a title and description. So let's choose merge changes from the logging changes branch we created, and then say to put those into the main branch as a target. The editor will auto populate our title from the commit notes, so you can leave the rest of this as is, and then choose create. The editor will create the pull request and display it in a new panel here for us. There are again various options here to control merging and submitting those changes. At this point though, I usually like to switch back to the main GitHub repository, which we still have open in the other tab here. So if we head over to the pull request section, we can see there is now one pull request open. 
Click on that item and you'll find a standard GitHub pull request with all of the changes in place. We accomplished all of this using the web editor in a really short amount of time. And from here, you can add reviewers or merge this or go back to the editor and finish the process there, whatever you'd like. Now, the GitHub editor does have a variety of limitations that we need to discuss and be aware of, so let's switch back over there. The first major limitation to understand is that this is really not a full compute environment. What I mean by this is that you can't really run or compile code here, it's just an editor. So if I press the control tilde shortcut to open a terminal window, we actually get this message that that's not available. To use a terminal in the browser here, we'd have to upgrade our environment to a GitHub code space. Code spaces are essentially the same editing experience we see here, but they're backed by a virtual compute environment in the cloud, so you can actually compile and run code and so on in a more full-fledged environment. They are definitely a cool tool, but they're also a deeper topic for a separate video. The second major limitation to understand is that support for extensions is pretty limited in this editor. If we browse to the extensions tab, you can see the editor sort of implies that a lot of them can be installed, but many will come with limited functionality or they'll tell you they can't be installed when you try to use them. Some of the simpler extensions can of course be installed and do work, but just be aware that your options are pretty limited here compared to the full rich VS Code extensions experience. Since the GitHub editor is not a full compute environment with full state support and so on, it really doesn't support the huge variety of extensions we normally have in VS Code. The code spaces environments I mentioned before actually do support most VS Code extensions, but that's an upgrade for later. Now to wrap up, I want to summarize some different use cases for the GitHub web editor. The first is just if you want to extensively browse a repository's files and meaningfully read through code without the tedious navigation experience of the browser. Maybe you just want to learn more about a repository or you're hunting around for code examples and solutions. This is really useful for that. The second use case is for quick edits. Maybe you work at a company or an organization with tons of repositories and you don't want to keep cloning them down every time someone requests a small change or configuration update. Another use case is simply a productivity boost. Maybe you have the repo locally, but it's not open and you don't want to open more VS Code instances. Instead, you can just open the repo in a new tab and start making your changes there. One other interesting use case is if you're on a low power machine or a machine that doesn't support installing tons of native OS tools. The editor works on any device that supports a web browser, so you could theoretically browse and edit projects on a tablet or other simpler interface devices. So if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and have fun experimenting with the GitHub editor. It can really be a super useful tool and not enough people are taking advantage of it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.